Hello. Um, so another week has gone by almost the end of February. Um, I really like the blog today. I've sort of, you know, I've been in a bit of a funk, but I think I'm kind of getting out of it. So, um, and this week, so many great things happened with friends. I want to start with um, Dave Koenig, who's an actor and a comedian, and he invited me and, you know, a whole group of people to the, I think the second reading of this um, musical review that came out from uh, the pandemic, he calls it The Darkness. And I'd seen this, the first one uh, last September. And um, I mean, and they've tweaked it. It's really tight now, um, funny, uh, also very moving. I mean, the parts of it that are incredibly moving and it's just great and I, Remember, you heard it here first. This is going to end up in a theater, either you know, off Broadway, on Broadway. It's it's kind of like, it reminds me of like Rent in a way. There's that sort of element of it. Though, by the way, it's called King of the Bronx because he and uh, the family all live up in the Bronx. And then during the pandemic, uh, David had uh, started uh, painting and actually like got some gallery shows and everything. And then his musical collaborator, Elliot Finkel, I think it is, has just sort of suggested to him like, why don't we use these paintings as sort of these themes for this review? And it just, it's brilliant. It's just really, really brilliant. So big, big kudos, congrats to Dave Koenig. Um, then another friend of mine, my friend David Moreland, was cast in a very small part, but, you know, I mean, he's great. And it's, it's in uh, this Miramax movie. You couldn't really tell me too much, but I'm a really great Googler and finder out of things. So it's, um, well, first of all, it's with the star of it is Pete Davidson. And I think most of you know how I... I just really think he's amazing, really just such a cute guy. Anyway, so the, the movie, though, is written, it's a horror thriller movie, and it's written by James DeMonaco, who was also the director and the writer of that Purge franchise. I mean, something I would never really go to see. But anyway, um, the fact that David got this part in this, um, super, super cool. And again, I feel so great for him. Um, then also that same night that I went to see Dave Koenig's thing, I went to have dinner with my friends, Rodrigo and Elliot, Midtown, and they um, introduced me to what is now my favorite French restaurant called Benoit. It's an Alan Ducasse, Ducasse, I don't know how to pronounce the name, but it was so good. And this is, I mean, it's so much better than you know, Orsay, which I've been really disappointed in, Balthazar, which has been a disaster for years. And then even Le Pavillon, which is Daniel Belut's new place, which is very, like, nice. But this Benoit, anyone who wants to go, I mean, my God, hit me up because it's really good. I had the most amazing steak au poivre that I've had in years. Excellent. Uh, I also want to talk a little bit about the remote work. You know, most of you know I'm not a big fan of that. But um, what I saw, which kind of I think is really sort of interesting, is that in Tempe, Arizona, the first ever that I've run across, I guess, um, apartment complex for work from home office workers. So what that really means is, so number one, it's like, in, you know, it's set in an urban, I mean, downtown Tempe. And then the, the amenity that makes, or the amenities that make it work from home is that every apartment's got a built-in desk. Uh, and there are also one bedrooms with an office, but uh, I think the majority of them are actually sort of more like studio apartments. Um, and then they've got meeting rooms and Zoom rooms, but there's no, um, the, you know, there's no swimming pool. There's none of that kind of stuff. So it's really for, really with this eye on working from home. Um, you know, I, 
Well, I don't know. I think it's kind of, it's interesting that someone's doing that. I don't know long term. Um, and then my other, and this is being a little snarky, I know, but my other thing is for all these work from home, I, th I think it's really like a privilege. I, I guess I'm saying this because I used to have a business and I would just hate it if I was running this business and instead of having, you know, everyone in the office, we're like Zooming and every. I mean, why even bother having a business? But anyway, uh, the thing that I do want people to think about, especially, you know, sort of the, you know, these sort of white collar workers who also have children, like what what will happen when teachers decide that they should all go remote and we should why why do we need why do we need schools or universities everything can be done remotely how appealing is that going to be um so anyway that's that and then i i discovered this new guy I forget how he got on my radar it was like through kosher dills or somebody on instagram he's called big tommy i think his name's like tommy ramola He's got like 400,000 followers on Instagram. I just love, it was his thought for the day and it was, and he's driving this like big car. I think he's driving to Florida or something. And he's like, remember difficult roads often lead to beautiful destinations. And that's the thought I want to leave you with. So that's it. Ciao.